Welcome back to Drugs to Code. Today, we're diving into some exciting research topics in cancer treatment. If you're a healthcare professional, this video is definitely for you. We're here to guide you in selecting and designing impactful research studies by suggesting new and relevant topics. First, I'll walk you through the theory behind each topic, and then I'll explain the research methodology you can use to explore it. Let's get started. Our first topic is Adverse Effects of Chemotherapy in Cancer Patients. Chemotherapy is one of the most effective treatments for cancer, but it comes with a range of side effects that impact patients' daily lives. Here, we'll explore the most common chemotherapy-related adverse effects and how they can be managed. Then we will see the methodology. First up, nausea and vomiting. This affects up to 80% of patients on chemo. It's one of the most distressing side effects, but the good news is it can be managed well with antiemetics like ondansetron or metoclopramide. Chemotherapy also suppresses the bone marrow, which means reduced red cells, white cells, and platelets. This can lead to anemia, infections, and bleeding issues. Regular blood monitoring is essential. Mucositis is the painful inflammation of the mouth and gut lining. It makes eating difficult and increases infection risk. Proper oral care is a must here. Next, hair loss or alopecia. Chemotherapy targets rapidly dividing cells. Unfortunately, that includes hair follicles. While it's usually temporary, it can have a big emotional impact on patients. Peripheral neuropathy. This is nerve damage that causes tingling, numbness, or pain, especially in the hands and feet. Drugs like vincristine and paclitaxel are often responsible. Fatigue is very common. It's not just from the treatment itself, but also due to anemia and the metabolic stress on the body. It can deeply affect a patient's daily life and mental health. And finally, infections. As white blood cell counts drop, patients become more vulnerable. Simple precautions like hand hygiene and avoiding crowds can make a big difference. Next, we will look how can we manage this side effects. Start with pre-treatment counseling. Educating patients about what to expect can reduce anxiety and help them mentally prepare for the journey ahead. Next, supportive medications, antiemetics for nausea, growth factors like GCSF to prevent neutropenia, and even pain relievers for neuropathy can be game changers in maintaining treatment adherence. Encourage lifestyle adjustments. A well-balanced diet, adequate hydration, and proper rest are simple yet powerful tools in managing fatigue, mucositis, and overall recovery. Lastly, don't forget the psychological side. Offer access to counseling services or support groups. Emotional strength is just as important as physical resilience during chemotherapy. Okay, now let's see the method. You can adjust this according to your feasibility. Design your study as observational, prospective retrospective study in an oncology unit. Population would be cancer patients, greater than or equal to 18 years, receiving chemotherapy. Excludes palliative care patients. Patient demographics, chemotherapy regimen, adverse effects are required data. You can collect via clinical assessment and questionnaires and lab investigations. Analyze your data through descriptive statistics for frequency, charge, severity of side effects, correlation between drug type and adverse effects. From this analysis, you can prefer some management strategies for each side effects. This study is helpful to the chemotherapy patients in future. By studying chemotherapy side effects, we can develop better strategies to reduce discomfort and improve patient outcomes. Our next topic is role of supportive care medications in improving chemotherapy tolerance. First, let's see the brief theory behind this study. Types of supportive care medications. First up, antiemetics. These are used to prevent or control nausea and vomiting. Common agents include ondansetron, a serotonin receptor antagonist, and a prepotent, which blocks neurokinin-1 receptors. Next, pain management. Chemotherapy can cause various types of pain. For effective relief, opioids like morphine and NSAIDs such as ibuprofen are commonly used, depending on the severity and source of pain. Next, hematopoietic growth factors. These agents stimulate bone marrow to produce blood cells. Filgrastim helps boost white blood cells, while ipoetin alpha is used to treat chemotherapy-induced anemia. Next, gastroprotective agents. Chemotherapy can irritate the stomach lining. To prevent ulcers and acid-related complications, proton pump inhibitors like omeprazole are often prescribed. And finally, immunomodulators. These help support immune function and reduce the risk of infections or autoimmune complications related to chemotherapy. 
So how exactly do these supportive care medications improve chemotherapy tolerance? Let's break it down. By reducing pain, nausea, and fatigue, these medications significantly enhance patient comfort. This makes the overall experience more manageable for those going through intense chemotherapy cycles. Next, prevent treatment interruptions. When side effects are controlled, patients are more likely to stick to their treatment schedule. This helps maintain the effectiveness of chemotherapy and prevents unnecessary delays. Next, lower hospitalization rates. Fewer complications mean fewer emergency visits and hospital admissions. This not only reduces the burden on healthcare systems, but also lessens the emotional and financial stress for patients. Next, improve quality of life. Ultimately, supportive care improves both physical and mental well-being, allowing patients to maintain their daily activities and emotional strength throughout treatment. Okay, now let's see the method. You can adjust this according to your feasibility. You can conduct as observational or interventional study in oncology patients receiving chemotherapy. Data collection, symptom severity. Assess nausea, fatigue, pain, mucositis, and other side effects. Medication effectiveness. Measure improvements in patient reported outcomes and clinical markers. Adherence and side effects. Track compliance with supportive care and any associated adverse effects. Statistical analysis. Compare chemotherapy-related adverse effects between patients receiving standard care versus those with optimized supportive therapy. From this analysis, you can determine the impact of supportive care medications on treatment completion rates, quality of life, and hospitalization frequency. With that, we can conclude today's session. What we've shared is just to give you some ideas. You can modify the topics above according to your preferences. This was the second session of our research series. In the next session, we'll explore more research topics. Like, share, subscribe our channel for more.